Would some honourable member care to move that the House take note of miscellaneous business? The Honourable David Parker. Mr Speaker, it's increasingly clear that this government is not governing in the interests of everyday New Zealanders. And nowhere is this clearer than in respect of asset sales. Always about ideology, always about growing the gap between the rich and the poor, delivering to the sector which the National Party so plainly governed for. Only 3% of New Zealanders have purchased shares in Mighty River Power. We know that it increases the government deficit by $100 million, $100 million a year. We know that there are hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders who have been willing to sign up to a petition that is now requiring the government to hold a referendum as to whether asset sales proceed. But still, the government proceeds remorselessly with their asset sales programme. Mr Speaker, they have been willing to run roughshod over the interests of New Zealanders. They've been willing to push up the price of power. They've done that just recently in order to get Meridian Energy off the block. They've given a $30 million subsidy to Rio Tinto, the effect of which is to intervene in the pretend electricity market that we have in a way that is increasing electricity prices, which is a double blow to New Zealanders at the very time when they're suffering the loss of these assets that they hold dear. Mr Speaker, selling what already exists does nothing to increase New Zealand's economic output, and the government know it. It shows the paucity of their vision for New Zealand, and it's one of the reasons why a third of all New Zealanders have not had a pay increase for two years. It's one of the reasons why the median wage has gone down in real terms for since 2009. Mr Speaker, then we have the excuses that are put out by the government for the asset sales programme. They say they had a government debt problem. Well, despite their, their uh, unaffordable tax cuts, because they inherited such low government debt from the government, despite the fact that this government has run five deficits in a row, New Zealand's government debt remains low by international standards. Mr Speaker, the, the money that they were said they needed from the assets programme has been spent a hundred times. They said that they were going to use it for debt reduction. That was Tony Ryle. Then they said, Mr English said it was going to be Kiwi Bank recapitalisation. Then Nathan Guy said it was going to be funding irrigation schemes. Then we had John Key come in and say it was going to be schools and hospitals, and Jerry, Jerry Brownlee came in with something similar. He said it was going to rebuild Christchurch. And then we had Minister Joyce. He thought, well, look, I've got to get in on this game. He said it was going to fund Kiwi Rail. Six. And then we had Mr Key come along and he said it was going to fund the city rail. And then, of course, Mr Finlayson, you know, a bit player in the government, thought that he'd have his little bit of it too and said, oh, the Future Investment Fund, this is fundamentally important because it's going to fund the National War Memorial. The National War Memorial. Mr Speaker, the Future Investment, the Future Forward Fund, well, that might be right. This, it's a slush fund. It's a political slogan that they trot out to try and justify this unpopular policy that is so unpopular that more than 300,000 New Zealanders have independently signed a form saying, please don't do this, hold a referendum, and what's the government doing? They're ignoring it. Yep. Having spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the asset sale process, hundreds of millions of dollars on the asset sale process, they say it's irresponsible of the, of the opposition parties to cause a referendum where New Zealanders are exercising their constitutional right to try and tell the government they do not want it. This government has tried to hide from the New Zealand public the true effects of this at the time of the last election. They denied that their budget went backwards by $100 million per annum. They booked the proceeds of sale. They didn't take any account of the loss of revenue they suffer as a cost of a loss of profit shares. Mr Speaker, this government's economic program is failing. We've got rampant house price inflation. We've had more than 200,000 people go to Australia uh, and we've got decline in the provinces because the economic promises of this government are not being made good.
Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, if there is a moment of truth about assets...